Hi. Hello again. We're on page 36 of the Proclaimers book, the chapter, The Great Apostasy Develops. There's a box, and the box is titled Plato and Christianity, Christianity being in quotation marks. Mm -hmm. The Greek philosopher Plato, born around 428 BCE, had no way of knowing that his teachings would eventually find their way into apostate Christianity, Plato's principal contributions to quotation mark surrounded Christianity were in connection with the teachings of the Trinity and the immortality of the soul. Plato's ideas about God and nature influence Christendom's Trinity doctrine, explains the Nouveau Dictionnaire Universel. The Platonic Trinity, itself merely a rearrangement of older trinities dating back to earlier peoples, appears to be the rational philosophic trinity of attributes that gave birth to the three hypostases, or divine persons, taught by the Christian churches. This Greek philosopher's conception of the divine trinity can be found in all the ancient, and they've got in a bracket, pagan religions. Mm, and also some ellipsis in there, too. Mm -hmm. Regarding the immortal soul doctrine, the New Catholic Encyclopedia says the Christian concept of a spiritual soul created by God and infused into the body, a conception to make man a living whole, is the fruit of a long development in Christian philosophy. Only with Origen, and then in square brackets, died about 254 CE, in the East, and St. Augustine, and then they put in brackets, died 430 CE, in the West was the soul established as a spiritual substance and philosophical concept formed of its nature. And then they have ellipsis, Augustine's doctrine, more ellipsis, owed much, including some shortcomings, to Neoplatoism. Neoplatonism. Oh, Leo. Neoplatonism. Which is a development from the older Platonism. Mm. So what's wrong with this? Well, the facts are okay, non-disputable, in that here you have standard sources, what we might even call Christian sources, making the point that there's a connection between some pagan ideas and later theological doctrine. But in your mind as a witness, that means something automatically bad. Okay. What you don't see is the is the complexity of this situation when you're talking about paganism. As they mark here, it's the philosophers of Greece that are thinking along Trinitarian lines, not the people. The the common people thought more like us as Jehovah's Witnesses. They could only conceive of a, a god who was greater than other gods, so henotheism and polytheism, they could conceive of a a creator god and they could create a they could conceive of a god that was more powerful than the other gods mm -hmm. but they couldn't conceive of an infinite complex god mm -hmm. the only gods they could conceive of are gods like us who were greater than us but but bound limited yeah still defined the way you would define humanity but just in another sphere yeah and so the greek philosophers like socrates and plato would come to a belief in one God, not not polytheism, not even henotheism, a belief mm. which is basically what the Watchtower has, two gods, mm. but mm. an infinite number of powers under them who are also limited and created. Mm -hmm. But the Greek philosophers were ahead of the curve here and that they were thinking, no, there can only be one creator God, and if that God is is the creator, then he's not limited like his creations. So it's it's... When you, when you read in the Old Testament, the beginnings, people believed there was the God of the valleys, the God of the hills. So it, was, it took time for them to come to an understanding that God was, was bigger than their notions of gods. Even the notion of one, one yeah. God. Yeah. Not one like us. We, we yeah. are units bound by space and time. But that took time for them to understand that. Yeah. It, because they, they wanted God to be understandable. Exactly. And they, they wanted it to be able to figure him out and explain him. Well, isn't that our folly as Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah, I think so. We're, we're more like those early pagan people who wanted God 
to be limited mm -hmm. and so the watchtower does limit God they they say what he can and can't do uh, you know he, he's not even omnipresent yeah this is the official statement of JWR yeah. he's got to be a single unit and compared to man he, he has to be in heaven and not come to the earth and he can't see the future all the time only selectively yeah yeah, and this is more like let's the, this hope is he more like the right time, eh? This is more like the simple deities of the common pagan than it is like the philosophers. Mm -hmm. They're headed off, yes, they're headed off in a trinitarian direction, speculating as to how the infinite complex God can somehow interact with his universe, his creation. Yeah. But but what's missing here is that the Jews were doing the same thing at the very same time. Yeah. Plato and Socrates live in the fourth century and at the very same time, that is in between the two testaments, the rabbis were speculating about the data of, about Yahweh appearing but still being in heaven. They were doing the very same thing that the great philosophers were doing. Yeah. So what they're actually admitting here is that the best minds of antiquity, not including the Jews who aren't mentioned, were going off in the Trinitarian direction. And I think it's because they, they didn't think of oneness as a unit. When we're witnesses, we always think of it as a unit, a single unit. We never, we don't understand what that, a, a one that could be complex. An infinite. Yeah. yeah, but the universe is one universe, but you can't say it's a single unit. Infinite, infinite and infinitely complex, yeah. We have analogies, but we don't follow those analogies. The analogies no. we like are, well, more human. Yeah, mathematics, numbers. Mathematics, yeah, numbers. Yeah. Well, I want to put a link in to Pincus Lapide, an Orthodox Jew who it enters into dialogue with Jürgen Moltmann, the Christian mm -hmm. theologian, on the subject of the Trinity and makes the point, does Lapide, that the, the Jews, the Jewish rabbis, are much less hostile to the Trinitarian concept than are, let's say, Muslims or Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because of the fact they were already speculating in this direction before the coming of Jesus. They, they could uh, appreciate oneness as being complex, not always simple. So there are four videos linked together. We'll mm -hmm. put the first one on your screen. And also another one we did. What's the title uh, of the one about the Egyptians? Is JW's God the God of Moses or more like the Egyptian and pagan deities? Mm -hmm. We've also got playlists now, since we started doing the Proclaimers book, playlists on the Trinity and on Hell and the Afterlife. So you could check those out on the main page of our channel. We'll put the Trinity playlist on your screen too, so you can navigate more easily. Because we have touched on all these issues multiple times in the past, so uh, we don't want to be redundant. <laughs> Next time, the Kingdom Hope Fades. Mm -hmm. See you soon.